it's Rachel and today I'm going to tell you about how to bring motion capture data from Motion Builder into UE4. So this is Motion Builder. We're going to start by dragging in a FBX of raw motion capture data and then click Ctrl W and it'll bring you to the screen. You're going to get rid of all of the unnecessary markers. So anything labeled like system, cameras, unlabeled markers, just get rid of it. The only markers that should be left are the ones that are actually driving your motion capture data. Once those are the only markers you have left, just drag them underneath the name of the motion capture data just to keep things clean and easy to see. Next, we're going to save. I would recommend saving at every step in the motion capture editing process so that if something crashes, or messes up, you can just go back a step. Highlight the entire skeleton and set all the rotations to zero. And then select the hips and set the X rotation to 90. This cleans up your T-pose. Once that is done, go into the content browser and drag character onto the hips. Click, select characterize and then biped. And then rename your character to mocap so that you know exactly what you're looking at later in the process. Then I'd recommend saving and we will move into Maya. So here's Maya. We're gonna open the reference editor and import a character. So for this demo, I'm gonna be using a Miles Morales Spider-Verse rig that I have made motion capture ready. If you want to use this rig, just know that it is does not come motion capture ready, but if you wish to modify it, I will leave some resources in the description below. All right, so here he is. Click six to show materials. All right, now we're gonna drag in the FBX of clean the motion capture data from Motion Builder. And we're gonna go into the human IK and change the source to mocap. And now the mocap data is going to drive our custom rig. So there he goes. As you can see, I am going to be editing a web shooting animation today. There's a lot of variations in this file, so I'm just gonna pick one variation to clean up for this demo. I may come back and clean up some other variations at a later date. We're going to set project and save. Setting the project makes it so that when you're saving your files or looking for your rigs and other things to import, everything is in one location and just easier and faster to grab. And go ahead and save. All right, now I'm going to go and bake the motion capture data to our Miles Morales rig. So this just transfers all the keyframes, and now you no longer need the original mocap skeleton. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it so that it does not confuse us later on. And then just to keep things easy to see, I'm going to make sure only the NURBS curves and polygons are able to be viewed in the viewport. Next, I'm going to choose which variation of the web shooting I want to clean up today. I think that's a good starting frame right there. That's a good end frame. select the entire rig and go into the graph editor. Once here, delete all of the keyframes before and after the section that you want to keep. Then go into your timeline and make sure to snap the remaining keyframes. This will make sure that they are all on whole numbers instead of weird decimals. Now go back into your graph editor and select all the remaining keyframes and drag them over so that they start at one. And then adjust your timeline so that it also starts at one 
it ends at whatever frame is necessary for the length of your animation. Okay, so this is what we have left. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to add a more neutral ending pose. So I'm going to extend the timeline a little bit. And the reason I want to have the animation end in a more neutral standing position instead of halfway through a walk is that it makes it easier to blend animation clips in UE4. Next, I'm going to add a new animation layer. So with animation layers in Maya, any controller that you want to modify needs to be added to that animation layer. So I'm just going to select the whole, all the controllers and add them to this new animation layer. The only thing I want to be modified is the, is I just want to add one extra pose at the end. So I'm going to set the zero keys so that everything is going to stay the same except for the end pose. Now I can just create that new pose at the end. Okay, now that that pose is more or less how I want it, I'm going to make a new animation layer. I'm going to name it Fingers, and what I want to do is adjust the hand pose so that it resembles Spider-Man's like, more classic web shooting pose. So I'm going to select all of the finger controllers and add them to this animation layer. Next, I'm going to use zero keys to bookend what exactly it is I want to be changing. So it's only going to be the frames in between the zero keys that are going to be modified for this pose. Now I'm thinking I might actually want to make this use this animation layer for all the controllers that I would I'm gonna want to modify to exaggerate this pose because it's gonna be like the most um, dramatic pose from the, for this animation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of the controllers that I'm gonna want to modify to exaggerate this pose and put them in this animation layer.
All right, now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go through and make sure there's no clipping. So as you can see, the arm here is going through the body a little bit, so I'm just gonna modify that. The reason you will most likely find clipping when you are cleaning up motion capture data is that the more different the proportions of the actor are from the character, the more likely clipping is going to be. Now we are going to export as an FBX, so select all the joints, select all the geometry, click on export selection, and once you get to the screen, make sure that the things checked off, you want to make sure animation is checked, fake animation is checked. Make sure that the frame range is correct and that it matches the frame range on your timeline. Once you've named the file and chosen a location, click export. Exporting can take a while depending on how heavy your rig is and how long your animation is. And once that's done, we can move into Unreal. All right, so drag the FBX you just exported from Maya into your content browser. If you already have a skeleton in Unreal, make sure that skeleton is selected. Otherwise, make sure that it is set to none. And then make sure an import animation is checked. And if you want to import materials, make sure it says create new materials. Otherwise, make sure it says do not create materials and then click import. Now drag the skeletal mesh into your scene, and then in animation, um, select choose animation asset, and then select their animation, and then click play. I like to use simulate, and now you can see what your animation looks like in engine. And now that you know that it works in engine, from here you can put it into a blueprint or you can leave it as an animation asset, whatever is required for what you're using it for. Make sure to save all of the pieces because they all need to be saved separately. And yeah, that's it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Bye!